Hey everyone, my name is Daniel and in today's video, I'll walk you through how you can monitor your AI builder activity. Now, this video is part of my overall AI builder series and since now I've already done three videos, this is a good time for me to pivot just a little bit and focus on the monitoring piece. So throughout this video, I'll actually show you three ways how you can do that. First is an out of the box feature that is already available for you and I'll walk you through that. Second is to utilize some of the features that are already available in your center of excellence toolkit, but since they are optional, they are by default disabled. And third is to utilize these hidden tables that are already there capturing some amazing information and how you should go ahead and leverage them. So stick around because this is very, very important both for the app makers and the administrators. But first, Here's my intro video. So let's get started. And before we jump into the how, let's talk about the why. The why being, why is it so important to monitor your AI builder? And it all boils down to this one place in your Power Platform Admin Center, down in resources and when you go to your capacity, if you scroll down just a little bit under the add-ons, your AI builder credits. That is the key thing that you should be monitoring, especially Power Platform admins, as far as two things, how many credits you have and how much of it is being consumed. And this is the place to quickly come and get a snapshot of that. So for example, in my demo tenant, based on all the licenses that I have, I have a total of 9,500 credits that can be consumed on a monthly basis. And as of right now, while I'm recording this video, you can see that I have got 660 of these 9,500 that have been consumed. But I also have 6,500 of them already assigned. So you see, this is why we need to monitor to see how our credits are being utilized by which AI models and get as granular information as possible. So now that you know the why, let's jump into the how. So the first way is to utilize an out of the box tool that is already made available in Power Platform, but it is at an environment level. So what that means is that anytime you have models and then all of the apps or flows which are consuming these credits, you have to go to each and every environment to take a look at this tool. So as an example, I actually have an environment which I specifically call as AI Builder Stuff. And if I go down to the left side and if I click on more, and if I click on discover all, right over here under monitor, I have something called as AI Builder Activity. And yes, it is under preview, but it's there for you to go and utilize. So if I go and click on it, what it takes us over here into this tabular type of view. And by default, it already shows you all your models and the last seven days. So if I go and click on this, I can go ahead and change that to all the way up to the last 28 days as well, or even go and put in some of my custom days. So I'll switch it over to 28 days just so that we can actually see more information. And here it is. It is showing me all the data that is processed. It is showing me exactly the date and the time, which one was actually modeled that was used and all the AI credits that was there. Now this is at a per use at a model level. So if you've got multiple models, that's fine. Come over here, click on the all AI models, and then you can go and pick which one you want. So actually in the previous video, I used this model called extract information from resumes. So when I go and select it and click on apply, now we can actually go and see all the runs that happen utilizing this specific model. And there were several of them because this was extracting information from resumes and depending on the size of the resumes, sometimes 118 credits we utilize, while on the other side, it could be 154. This is at each and every run level, whether it is being utilized in an app or it is utilized in the flow. Every time my model was used, it goes ahead and keeps track of it right here. But you know what? This is it. This is all the information that I shows you. So over here, there's kind of two limitations. One is, like I said, it's at the environment level. And two is, this is it. It shows you at the model level, but it doesn't show you directly down to the app or the flow level. And yes, if you go and click over here, this is all the information that you see. You see right here, this is all that is it. So there is a lot to see over here. And even if you go and try to extract it and try to process it, you still cannot see if it was an app or a flow level. 
So this is the first process where it is at an environment level, but it is available out of the box. Second is the Center of Excellence Toolkit, because along with that comes this Power BI report, which will show you the AI builder for monitoring and also the AI credits usage. Now, in order for you to see it, there's one requirement. You have to be in at least April of 2024 version, because in this version, if I go and scroll down just a little bit, of the 16 new features that came in, one of it was the AI Builder Capacity Consumption Report. So that's the first thing. Second thing is you also have to go ahead and run some flows because it is an optional thing, which means you at least have to turn it on. And to do that is very simple. You basically go into your Center of Excellence Solutions. So I'll just go outside. This is it. It's my Center of Excellence Core Components. I go ahead and click into it. Then you go into your Cloud Flows and in your cloud flows, specifically go down and search for these ones. So one of them is called as the AI model. So right over here, when I scroll down, you see that Sync Template V4 AI models, that one needs to be turned on. And then the other one is also the AI usage. Usually the AI usage is the optional one and that one will be turned off over here. This is the one that you need to turn on because then it will go and capture all of the consumption that is going on of your AI credits. And once this happens, you will be able to come to your Power BI report and then over here on the AI Builder, get a good snapshot of all the AI Builder activity that is happening in your tenant. Because in my case, I'm able to see for all of my environments, not just one, all of my environments. And if I scroll to the right, you are able to even get information of when it was created on. And on the right side over here, you get a good idea of the timeline, when there was a big spike, when there was a drop, and all of these different models that are here. Now, if I scroll down just a little bit, I'm also able to go and click on AI credits usage. Again, as a reminder, this is the one that is optional and you have to turn on that flow. After the flow has run, when you come over here, you are now able to see the credit usage, which means how many credits have been consumed so far. So in my case, I currently have that AI builder environment. Over here, I specifically have this one model and it has consumed 118 of my credits. This is pretty neat because now again, I get a good snapshot of all the activity that is happening. But one of the limitations over here is I don't see what exactly is it that's consuming. Is it a Canvas app or is it a Power Automate Flow? What is it? And I have no clue. And I even took it one step further. See right over here, if I go ahead and click on edit and that if I even go ahead and expand that, I'm able to see that this is basically a table. I'm able to see that this report is actually a table called AI Credits Usage. And if I go ahead and expand that over here, nowhere am I able to actually find what it is that is running. Is it an app or a flow? I can't find that information over here. So it's pretty neat overall. It does good information. It's in a reporting tool, but we need that extra information. And there is a way to do that as well. The third and the final way is to find that hidden table, which gives you all the detailed information that you have, and it is at an environment level. So in this example, I am in my environment, you know, the one I just showed you, AI Builder stuff. Over here, I'm gonna go to Tables. Now click on All, and on the right side with the search, just go and do a search for AI, and that will filter all these tables. The one that you want is AI Event. Now if you go and click on it, and it will start to load over here, you might think initially that, hey, this looks a lot like this one report that you showed me, Daniel, the AI Builder. It kind of has almost the same look and feel. That is true, it does, but man, this thing has a plethora of information. So let's just do one thing, all right? Let me just go and click on Edit. That way we can actually see all of it, and it has loaded. So we've got the created on, which is great. We've got the AI event. The AI event is basically just a grid, and it's telling me the model. But here's where the excitement starts, all right? If I scroll to the right, it is basically telling me, hey, your consumption source was a power app. Then it says API, then it says power apps and there's power automation. Like this is how I'm able to say that that one specific AI model that I created, when was it consumed by an app and when was it consumed by a flow or power automate? This is what I wanted to see in this report over here, which unfortunately is not available. But now I've shown you that in the backend table called AI events, you are able to go and capture this information. But wait, there's more. If I scroll to the right, okay, right over here, there is a column called quick test. And what that basically means is that anytime you see yes, 
that was the run when you were still building that AI model and you were doing the tests over there. When the model was created and was being tested, each and every test will actually have this toggle switch turned on. This means that you will not be built, like there will not be any credits consumed. So just to prove it to you, right, this one over here, the second row item is on. So if I go and scroll a little bit to the left, you see that its credit is zero. Now let's take a look at these other ones, like one, two, three, four, five, six, all of these six over here, all right? So it's all of these six over here. If I go and select it, and if I go to the right, you will see, there you go, one, two, three, four, five, six, they were tests that was done. See, this is what I'm talking about, detailed information that I wanna see of exactly how my credits are consumed, and now I'm able to find it over here. Because now that you know where to find this information, you can go ahead and build your own custom Power BI report. In fact, you can take ideas from your COE right over here and maybe even add another page and go and get information from there. Like you've got options to do this because the data over here is already being captured and it is getting captured almost real time. So anytime your AI model is triggered in an app or a flow in that environment, if you come over here, you will see the latest event that is being processed and being logged in this table. This is pretty awesome. So the one thing that I wanna point out about that AI events table is that it's completely independent. That is, anytime you start using AI models in that environment, that AI events table will automatically start populating. It has no dependency on that center of excellence toolkit. The center of excellence toolkit is the place where you actually have to go and turn on that option and flow, and then it captures all that information. The two are completely independent. Thought I'll clear that confusion. So hopefully this video was useful to you. I highly, highly urge you to go ahead and explore all the three ways that I've shown you. That way you have full visibility of all the activity across all AI models. And as always, keep using AI Builder. Hey, if you have a few seconds, can you click on that like button and even consider subscribing it? Because it's just two easy clicks for you, but boy, it makes a big difference for me. Also, if you don't mind, can you put in a comment below? Because that really boosts this video up to reach a higher audience. And once again, thank you for watching this video.